Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. It is often the first thing you notice when you enter a business. You get a sense, you pick up a feeling, you experience an atmosphere. It's as if you've been flooded with what it means to be part of this organisation. Corporate culture, which is the topic of this presentation, is one of the most influential internal factors on an organisation's success. So what will we learn during this presentation? Well, first of all, we're going to find out what corporate culture is. Thereafter, we're going to find out about different types of corporate culture. Then we'll look into how corporate culture is created. And then finally, we'll look at the benefits and disadvantages of corporate culture. So let's start with our first question which is, what is corporate culture? Corporate culture is the feeling or atmosphere you experience in an organisation and it is created by the values, beliefs and attitudes of those in that organisation. In other words, corporate culture describes the character and personality of an organisation and thus determines the way things are done in the business. This is an incredibly important point because how a business does things and the approaches it uses can have a significant impact on its success. In fact, it has been argued that a strong corporate culture can account for a 20 to 30% competitive advantage over other organisations. So let's turn to our second question and ask, what types of corporate culture exist in organisations? A popular type of corporate culture that exists in business is a competitive results driven one. This is a culture that is based on winning and achieving success, where targets are set and are expected to be achieved. Another popular culture that organisations choose is supportive and caring. This type of culture is warm, welcoming, and encourages strong relationships and lots of collaboration between staff to achieve success together. A third type of culture found in many organisations is one centred around innovation and learning. A learning culture is based on developing people, creativity and inventiveness. This type of business wants to be seen as being pioneering. Another common culture is one focused around order. This type of culture stresses the importance of structure, procedures and following rules. In this type of business, every activity is done in a certain way. Other types of culture that can exist in an organisation include informal and casual. In this culture, fun, playfulness and a relaxed atmosphere are important. Whereas other organisations choose an authoritative culture where management control and power are the key elements of corporate culture. And a final type of culture an organisation may choose is one centred around caution and safety, where planning, predictability and being risk cautious are promoted. It would seem, based on what we've discussed so far, that a business has only one culture across the whole organisation. While this is true in part, we also need to be aware that subcultures can exist within particular departments, teams and sections of the business. For example, overall an organisation may have a supportive and caring culture. However, within the product development section of an organisation, an innovative and learning culture may also exist. This is fine because both these cultures can happily coexist. Both these cultures have common characteristics which work well together. However, a problem could occur if the sales department had a competitive, results-driven culture. This is because this type of culture can conflict with a supportive and caring one. If the competitive, results-driven culture is all about hitting individual sales targets to achieve higher pay, this may work against a supportive and caring culture, which emphasises collaboration 
and cooperation. What this all means is that managers have to be very aware of different subcultures that exist or are evolving in their business. Culture can have a massive impact and can very much influence the success of a business's strategy. It is therefore vital that management understand that culture is a living thing that must be looked after if it is to remain healthy. With that in mind, it is now time to turn to our next question, which is how do organisations create and maintain corporate culture? The starting point for creating any type of culture is a vision or mission statement. This type of statement outlines in a few words exactly what a business's main purpose is. This type of statement is important because it lets all stakeholders know exactly what the business wants to be and what it wants to achieve and therefore acts as the foundation stone from which culture can be built. However, a mission statement in itself is not enough to build culture. An organisation must also define the values which will determine how it will operate in business. For example, an organisation may have values such as honesty and integrity. This tells all stakeholders but especially employees, that they will be expected to act fairly and to the highest of standards when dealing with customers and suppliers. Whereas, if a business held the value of cooperation highly, it would indicate to everyone that teamwork and collaboration are key parts of the way the organisation should work. It is clear that a vision statement and business values are the bones of culture. But the flesh are the actions and measures a business takes to embed the culture throughout the business. For example, corporate policies on recruitment, promotion and customer complaints should all be formed with the organisation's vision and values at their centre. This means if a business wants a competitive, results-driven culture, it needs to employ people who are ambitious, and must promote people who regularly exceed their targets. However, if a business wants a supportive and caring culture, it must attempt to employ and promote people who are kind and who have lots of emotional intelligence. Another way of creating corporate culture is through a dress code. An informal dress code may be appropriate for informal and casual, or innovative and learning cultures, as it helps to create a more relaxed and comfortable atmosphere. However, if a business wants a culture based on order, then a staff uniform should be enforced, as this will create consistency across the organisation. The way in which an organisation designs its building and office layout can also support the creation of culture. For example, having an open plan office space with areas for socialising and playing games would support an informal and casual culture where fun and enjoyment are at the centre. However, an organisation that wants to create an authoritative culture may provide managers with their own separate offices whereas staff are crowded together in a central workspace. Corporate culture can also be embedded through the working practices and reward systems used by a business. For example, if employees receive bonuses for hitting sales targets, this will promote a competitive, results-driven culture. However, if employees have flexibility over when and where they work, this would suggest a supportive and caring culture is being cultivated. Another measure used to create culture is to what extent an organisation empowers staff to make decisions. In an authoritative culture, for example, you'd expect staff to have limited decision-making power. Whereas in an innovative and learning culture, you'd expect staff to be given significant responsibility. As can be seen, 
Virtually everything that takes place in an organisation has a cultural aspect to it. For example, from the way employees talk about the business to others, to the way they speak to colleagues and managers, all the way through to something as simple as the colour used to decorate walls inside an organisation's offices, all influence culture. There is little doubt, therefore, that culture can have a big impact on a business and that is why organisations spend considerable amount of time and energy trying to develop a strong culture. So, what are the benefits of a strong culture? One of the main advantages of having a strong corporate culture is that it gives your staff a sense of belonging. They feel as if they are part of something that matters and has a purpose. In short, they believe in the business. This is important as it creates staff loyalty and improves staff retention, which not only reduces recruitment costs, but also creates a workforce that is full of experience and highly motivated. More than that though, Staff loyalty and belonging also helps to reduce staff absenteeism and all the costs associated with that, such as reduced production rates and having to bring in temporary staff to cover. It is obvious that a strong culture creates employee commitment. Staff will be willing to go that extra mile. If a contract needs completed, staff will work late to make sure it is done. Another advantage of having a great culture is that it gives a business a positive reputation. This not only helps attract the best talent who want to work for your business, but also appeals to customers. A business with a great culture tends to do things right. They make fantastic products and provide great service. All this fits in perfectly with what customers want, meaning that a business's sales and market share will rise. Strong culture also helps create a better relationship between staff and management. It removes the concept of them and us and replaces it with unity and togetherness. This is an important asset in business because a positive employer-employee relationship makes it easier to implement change without disruption, but also creates trust. This is useful as trust means staff will be more likely to ask for support if they require it, and management will be more likely to listen to staff suggestions. Both these situations should help to improve how a business runs by increasing productivity, reducing mistakes and improving creativity. A final advantage of strong corporate culture is that cliques or disruptive groups are dealt with quickly. The culture of the business does not tolerate people or groups trying to undermine it from within. This means when an organisation tries to implement change, it is not held back by disruptive groups, meaning it has a far greater chance of success. It is clear that strong culture is important, but to the same degree, having a weak culture can also be an issue. So what are the disadvantages of having a weak corporate culture? Weak culture can have a big influence on a business. It can cause employees to disengage and can result in the creation of disruptive cliques meaning the business becomes incredibly difficult to manage. Without a strong culture, there is nothing holding the business together as a unifying force. This means bad habits will seep into the organisation and rot it from the inside out. Change will be virtually impossible to implement as groups and departments resist and rebel against it. A weak culture is like poison to an organisation. It will slowly kill your organisation through lower motivation, reduced productivity and substandard performance. So what did we learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we found out what corporate culture is. And after that, we found out about the different types of corporate culture that can exist. 
We then went on and explored how corporate culture can be created. And finally, we looked at the benefits and disadvantages of corporate culture. Corporate culture puts a microscope on the quality of leadership in an organisation. This is because leaders have a massive influence over the culture that exists in an organisation. It is therefore vital that a business's leadership team understand their responsibility to create and maintain a strong culture. If they don't, or they neglect this responsibility, their organisation will suffer. In the end, corporate culture is the glue that keeps a business together and working towards a shared vision. As Henry Ford, founder of the Ford Motor Company put it, coming together is a beginning. Keeping together is progress. Working together is success.